Hello, and welcome to Middleside Topwise. Recently, we released our longest video to date, which debunked the notion that, quote, transgenderism is a modern trend being adopted by impressionable youth, and exposed the far-right Christian fundamentalist agenda behind this dog-whistle buzzword. To debunk something is to expose or ridicule the falseness, sham, or exaggerated claims of. I have never heard of anyone identifying as a transgenderist. I have, however, heard many exaggerated claims about the transgender community, and the folks repeating them often refer to the biological condition of being trans as transgenderism. Our goal with that video was to thoroughly expose and ridicule the falseness of this concept. Trans people existing and deserving the right to live comfortably is not something that can be debunked. In this video, we will be debunking the exaggerated claims that people make about the science of astrology. And it's not going to take me an hour and 15 minutes to do it. So let's begin. What does 420 mean to you? For many Americans, it means 40 minutes until I'm out of this hellhole for another day. However, in many other countries, it falls within a three-hour rest period taken after a midday meal. What other meanings does it have? We all recognize that there is a distinct difference between 2 p.m. on a Tuesday in the winter and 2 a.m. on a Saturday in the summer, and can predict to some degree what the vibe will be at those times suggesting that a grocery store parking lot will attract a very different crowd depending on the time of day is not an example of mysticism, it's just common knowledge that things change when the sun goes down. Astrology can be simply defined as a clock with more hands that spans a longer period of time than a single day. Once that is understood, the next step is to start making observations and document them over time. One may even review their findings with their peers. After you've engaged in this study for some time, you can begin to extrapolate patterns from the data you've collected. This is called science. There's no belief system to adopt. To this day, people continue to strawman this time-honored tool. In the 2023 Gish Gallup, Astrology Doesn't Work and Never Worked, Here's Why, author Mihai Andre states that the theory has no mechanism behind it. You want to know what else doesn't have an observable mechanism behind it? gravity, or time. However, we can observe how the sun and the moon affect these forces. Subsistence farmers from disparate cultures around the world have fed their families for generations by the guidance of the moon, and it's not until very recently that this technique has been challenged. So why are we trying to fix what isn't broken? People try to debunk the value of lunar gardening all the time, but what observable value is there in abolishing this agricultural practice? Is it so giant corporations can buy up all the land, underpay immigrants to overfarm it all year round, and sell the product to grocery stores that throw it in the dumpster? Or is it because you just don't like people who base their lives around the moon and not the sun? The Earth is approximately 70% water, as is the human body. Everyone agrees that the moon affects the ocean's tides, but oceans don't have borders. The moon actually affects all of the Earth's water levels which then affects nutrient availability in the soil. Even if you completely ignore the phases of the moon, it's common practice to harvest early in the morning, when plant tissues are strongest and coolest. Our hypothesis is that if there is an observable relationship between the Earth and our closest stars and planets, it would only make sense that other celestial bodies have a similar, if not more subtle, connection. The common response to this perfectly reasonable hypothesis is that the perceived magnetic field of other planets and constellations are negligible. This is moving the goalposts. You just said there's no mechanism, and now you're saying that there is a mechanism, but it's too weak to have an effect on us. The way we begin to notice the unconscious effects of the planets is to observe and document fluctuations in our psychological climate and compare them to prominent astrological transits. A causal agent being subtle and unconscious does not mean that it's supernatural. The human brain processes information and performs millions of functions per second in ways that cannot be consciously perceived. Andre then attempts to invalidate astrology by saying it's an unreliable appropriation of Babylonian pattern matching. Okay, so are we challenging the seven-day week then? 
which Sargon of Akkad chose over 4,000 years ago to venerate the seven visible planets? Speaking of which, how are there calendars from around the globe that all successfully managed to tell time? You'd think if there was an observable mechanism behind the calendar, we'd all be able to agree on one, right? He goes on to cite physicist Sean Carlson's 1985 study published in Nature magazine, which he says is widely regarded to be the most comprehensive test of astrologers' abilities to date. In it, less than 28 astrologers, the study does never actually mention the exact number of practitioners involved, examine the natal charts of 177 Bay Area residents. Carlson then presented these readings to the test subjects along with two randomized interpretations and asked them to choose the most accurate reading of the three. He also asked them to do the same with a standardized personality test known as the California Psychological Inventory. This was an abject failure as the participants were not able to recognize themselves in either the natal chart readings or CPI tests, with the paper soberly admitting that people may be unable to recognize accurate descriptions of themselves. The second test included just 116 participants, but this time asked astrologers to match natal charts with CPI results. They were unable to meet their hypothesized goal, which led Carlson to conclude that he was now in a position to argue a surprisingly strong case against natal astrology as practiced by reputable astrologers. That's it. We then get introduced to Ivan Kelly, who in 2003 released a far more comprehensive study that begins with the line, Astrology has one sure thing in common with parapsychology, a highly visible outpouring of market-driven nonsense that threatens to bury the work of serious researchers, and then proceeds to feed right into that very same market-driven nonsense by misinterpreting astrology as a hippy-dippy personality test. A natal chart will never be able to predict someone's personality because one's personality develops over the course of their entire life. Twins diverge because people have the ability to make their own decisions. People born at the exact same time in the exact same place still have their own unique experiences. I've never heard an astrologer make the claim that everyone born at the same time has the same personality. Where did this come from? The study I'll put forth in response was conducted in the late 1990s by popular skeptic and future Joe Rogan podcast regular Michael Shermer, who met with veteran Vedic astrologer Jeffrey Armstrong, and after spending 17 minutes finding passive-aggressive ways to call him a liar, the experiment resulted in a 77% accuracy across 137 participants. Link to the full video in the description. It is absolutely worth a watch. When these people say astrology doesn't work, they are referring to the accuracy of newspaper horoscopes and people that sell natal chart readings online. They are not investigating the relationships between astrological transits and earthly activities. I completely agree that there are a lot of people profiting off of astrology that don't know or care what they're talking about, but there are plenty of people using astrology in their daily life and work in a grounded and rational way to great effect. All sciences are branches of philosophical inquiry. Materialism is a branch of philosophy that stems from the ancient theory of atomism, which states that reality is made up of atom and void, with no underlying agent. However, modern technology has informed us that within each atom exists more void. Astrology is a branch of philosophy that works to address the notion that our consciousness is inextricably connected to the entire universe, and our perception of that connection is about as strong as our ability to perceive atoms. It does not claim to be the mechanism, but a tool used to observe the complex functions of the mechanism. In fact, most modern materialists engage in a form of Epicureanism, an ideology popularized during the Roman Empire committed to freedom from fear and absence of pain through both an understanding of the workings of the world and the limiting of desires. Epicureans also tend to withdraw from politics because it can lead to frustrations and ambitions that would conflict with their individualistic pursuits. This worldview has been compounded by eliminative materialism, a concept developed in the 1960s stating that the majority of psychological phenomena simply do not exist. 
and that folk theories of mind should be abolished in favor of a scientific account of cognition. Mind you, these eliminativists do not have this purported scientific account of cognition at their disposal. Eliminative materialism seeks to abolish thousand-year-old practices for an answer they don't even have. They are quite literally worshipping an ideal that doesn't exist. It's also incredibly bigoted to think that non-white cultures have not been practicing objectively good science. All of our modern pharmaceuticals come from folk medicine, our wellness culture comes from India, and we were all dying of plagues until black people taught us how to wash ourselves properly. So I feel like we should probably take indigenous contributions to psychology a bit more seriously. There are many ways these branches of philosophy can inform each other. Modern astronomical discoveries have provided us with great insights that make astrology more relevant than ever. The French Revolution happened during a Uranus-Pluto opposition, preceded by rebellions during similar transits in 1455 and 1395. During the Uranus-Pluto conjunction from 1845 to 1856, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels penned the Communist Manifesto. During the Uranus-Pluto opposition of 1896 to 1907, Mahatma Gandhi and Leo Tolstoy were influencing revolutionary movements in South Africa and Russia, respectively, as workers' unions began to form in the U.S. The next Uranus-Pluto conjunction was between the years of 1960 and 1972. An upcoming Uranus-Pluto trine begins in 2025. Uranus will be in Gemini, a transit that historically coincides with World War II, the Civil War, and the Revolutionary War. It has been said that the life of a nation is around 250 years. Pluto completes a full revolution around the sun every 240 years. Correlation does not equal causation, and it doesn't need to. All we are doing is using this data set to glean information about the world around us, as many great thinkers did before the church came along and started accusing everyone of heresy. As something of an occult scientist myself, I use the tools at my disposal. And like any science, it takes years of practice to be able to work with astrological charts. I have a working knowledge of stars and planets, but would never suggest that I could provide someone with an accurate astrological reading. And I don't think most people should. Astrology is a tool that's been successfully used to reflect on the psychological weather for millennia. It is not a fortune-telling system or a personality test. You are not a Capricorn or a Libra or a Sagittarius. This is something people do when they are searching for an identity and get sold on an aesthetic. Everyone has all 12 signs in us, to different degrees. Evangelical Christians would much rather you be an atheist that thinks everything is woo-woo bullshit than develop your own rational understanding of these systems. You aren't questioning the nature of reality, you're just rejecting the unconscious aspect of it. To them, you're just one life-altering situation away from going back to Jesus. To dismiss astrology as fake is to accept the colonial mindset that practitioners of this ancient science are witches and savages, or in one of the evil secret societies that run the world from behind closed doors. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in a no-nonsense way to stay caught up on the astrological forecast, my partner Tay put a lot of effort into this 2024 digital astrology calendar. It's a great reference tool for beginners and adepts alike without the distractions of stale interpretations or confusing jargon. Seamlessly add it to any calendar app and see how the stars line up with your schedule. Use the code MSTW to get 10% off. Good night and good luck.